Hey everybody, my name is FamCam. Welcome to It's Getting Late. We have a very special guest today. Um, this woman has been in the ASMR realm for quite some time now and is uh, starting to become a bit of a rising star in the scene um, over on YouTube and Twitch. And as I recently discovered as I was doing a little bit of research on her before the interview, because I'm a pro, not really, but kind of, um, <laughs> TikTok as well. Um, everybody, please welcome Independent Bitch ASMR. How you doing? Oh, hi, Keith. How are you? Thank I'm you so much for that introduction. <laughs> I'm doing f fantastic, and I'm, and I'm glad to see you are too, um, and you're very welcome. So um, let's start uh, the name, because when I first came across, and I'm sure you get this a lot, when I first came across you, I, uh, I kind of smiled and laughed a little bit, and uh, I'm curious, how did you come up with the name? Okay, so yes, a lot of people mostly on stream asked me this question and okay i'm gonna be completely honest Go for um it. a few years back i'm talking about like five years ago or something like that um i had broken up in a relationship okay um it was like a long-term relationship and then i went single and i was like really sad at the moment and i started posting a lot of quotes independent quotes like woman quotes that you find on pinterest i mm. made like my own page for that and so crazy i had a lot of great feedback from women i think going through the same thing like heartbroken or something and those quotes um made them feel stronger made them feel motivated that you can do anything on your own that you don't need somebody else to be there with you you know what? Um, i feel you're right there Yes, I it feel was right crazy. there. Um, so right now, and, and I put independent bitch, but without the T. Um, that was my page. That is my page on Facebook. I actually right now still have like 30,000 followers on that page just because of those quotes. And wow. um, then that's when I started ASMR like recently. And I kept that, you know, I'm like, I'm going to keep that name. Independent bitch um, is how I'm known in social media, like for my followers. And I'm just going to do the ASMR, independent bitch. So that is where it all started. That's the story. You know, you're kind of, you and I are kind of in the same boat because uh, I also went by FamCam long before I even knew what ASMR was, let alone started watching, listening, and doing it myself. Um, How fa it? FamCam stands for Film Animation Music. That's the fam part. The cam, because the K stands for Keith, my real name, and cam rhymes with fam. I really thought it was like family cam. a lot of people and think Pam, that I but yeah what, but i thought it was for, for family that's crazy yeah it, it the name has nothing to do with family but i do call uh, my audience the fam or the fam camions the uh, fam camions actually is a name that came up with a nickname that carol asmr gave me keithaniel californicus fam camion uh Californicus, because oh, cool. because i'm from california yeah but yeah so and that eventually that eventually became the name of my audience sort of based on that and because asmr shani calls her audience the shenanigans and that, um, that sort of gave me the idea to use fam camions yeah, as, as you money. got that yeah. kind of i just call them bichos sometimes my <laughs> bichos because in spanish because i do like talk spanish as well um yeah. bichos um has a meaning here in mexico that it's like your little squad, bichas and bichos. Hmm. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. So that integrated perfectly with independent bitch, like bichos, bichas. I love it. Um, but yeah, my name had nothing to do with ASMR. It started like that, like like I said, because uh, heartbroken and giving women um, the strength and independence. And that's how it just took independent Hell yeah. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And uh, how did the uh, drop of the T happen? Or is that just a Oh, because thing? I knew, um, I I thought if I put the T like bitch, there are going to be certain areas of social media that's not going to be accepted because right. they see the bitch and it's like that username is not allowed. Mm -hmm. um, even if Did I had try? used it on Twitch. No, I always <laughs> kept it like, I always kept it like without the T, like from the beginning, because I didn't want it to actually be like the bitch i didn't like i wanted the sound like you know what it means but i didn't want the word to look like 
bitch. You know. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah, but I never, I never even thought to put the T in. It was originally always without the T. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now, how did you, as you as you got into ASMR, how did you get into ASMR? Did um, did posting those quotes have anything to do with it, or is there something else along the way? As ASMR. Well? I started into ASMR. That was actually um, on a Netflix show. It was like the first Netflix show a long time ago that they were really? talking about. It was a series called about. It was interesting things about the world. And in mm. one of those um, episodes, it was specific, specific, specifically talking about ASMR. And I never knew anything about it. I'm talking about this was like four, four years ago, five years ago, kind of at the same time. And I looked at the episode. I'm like, what is that? They were making sounds like with um, objects. And I was like, what is that? Is that a thing? And then I started looking on YouTube and looked ASMR up. And I saw originally um, people doing, um, it was more about objects instead of like the whispering kind of thing. It was more object kind. And it was like, that is crazy. Because I then looked at it was about to keep people not being anxious or yeah. being able to sleep. And I really put it and it made me like go to sleep because I am a really anxious person. Um, and yeah, I do too. have trouble sleeping and that helped me. And it was crazy because I showed those videos to other friends that didn't know anything about it. I'm like, look at this video, look at it and tell me what you think. And they were like, what is this? And like, <laughs> it was really new. Like a lot of people didn't know. I was like, what, what is this? Supposed like, what is this? I'm like, I don't know. It's just supposed to help you sleep. And it's cool. And they're like, that's crazy. But then like, I just, watched a lot of videos and i liked it and then twitch came up because my brother was he's a gamer he streams hmm. games he loves streaming games so i was like feel free to plug him like, if you on. like oh thank you um he is joe legolas on twitch he streams a lot of mostly like shooting games i really don't know the names i'm not that good on those shooting games okay but he's really good thank you so much he's of course. Joe legolas on there and um, he's like, get on Twitch. Like, there's a lot of people doing ASMR and it's really cool. And I'm like, no, I can't. It's embarrassing to me. Like, I'm not <laughs> even good at it. I've never even tried it. He's like, no, just like, you can do it just like the video. You can just start whispering. And I just, he bought me actually the microphone. He bought oh. me the microphone. He bought me the camera. And he's like, I'm going to um, let you get started. So he actually made me get started on it. He set it up everything and on the go i just started to look at how i could use or implement different objects um after just whispering mm -hmm. initially i was just whispering and then it was just like getting objects and stuff and yeah i'm just still investigating a lot to do it on my own like i can see it and i love it but you doing it it's really different it is a whole nother experience um it's like it's like uh growing up as a kid riding in the back of the car and then suddenly you're 16 and you're getting by behind the wheel itself and it's and it it, it you don't even it, does, it doesn't even have the same feeling of being in the car at all it's, exactly. it's completely different you're in charge you decide how it goes and everybody is there to enjoy it. <laughs> yes, exactly like that. Exactly. Um, speaking of triggers, uh, what are some of your favorite triggers to do? Oh my gosh. You know, I love the tapping. I love tapping and also the hair cutting. I love anything that has to do about hair cutting or like mm. um, brushing your hair. Those are my favorite Absolutely. tapping and like hair brushing or cutting. I love that. I love those Favorite too. Traders. I can't do hair brushing very much because I don't have long hair anymore. I I, <laughs> I did when I was a young buck, but now that my hair is starting to recede, you had long for, hair. I had long hair I in my teens and twenties. Long hair. I need to see that. Yeah, I, I'll have to find an old <laughs> picture. But yeah, I used to have long hair. Uh, it was like down to here at one point. I think wow. it was. But yeah, but w w with my receding hairline, uh, it's kind of awkward now. <laughs> um, but well, may maybe I don't know. Maybe it'll be less awkward now that I have this beard because the last time I had long hair, I could not grow a beard this full. So well, maybe it would, you should try bring it back. Yeah. 
I'll Let's to, bring it back. I'll to I'll to look at my uh, my job's uh, pamphlet to see the rules on hair because <laughs> that job is important to me. But if it allows it, why not? Um, yeah, go for it. <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah. Um, and what are your favorite uh, triggers to listen to besides those, if you have any? I like the role playing type that it's when mm, they're being like the doctor. Ah, uh, yes. I like that they're checking me or something. I don't know. I like it. It's so weird when it looks like so real that they're like being the doctors checking on you. It's I love the role playing type ASMR. Role playing type ASMR is one of my favorites. Yeah, I I love them too. I I I enjoy I enjoy I enjoy doing uh, role plays um with voices like Solid Snake and Bob Belter. But uh, I I rarely do doctor role plays because uh, my parents are doctors, and I, oh, when I yeah. when I when I think of that kind of thing, I'm ten, I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist and try to do it right um, to honor their job. Right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. When uh, Miss Caitlin, aka Smart Kitten, was on the show. Um, when I was just when I was just an editor uh, on the show, Chris pointed out uh, the original host, Christopher Not Walken, pointed out, um, "You're breaking like 20, 20 laws with that with that role play or something like that." Because because no, you know most no. most people who do do doctor role plays uh, aren't actually doctors and therefore exactly. don't don't know the actual procedures very well. But exactly. never the but nevertheless, it's still relaxing and and most of us the viewers don't know either so no. it's fine but but because because of uh because of chris's um health conditions uh, yes. multiple health conditions he's been yeah. to the hospital so so much he's had over i think 25 surgeries now or something wow. like that yeah he's been through a lot so he knows a lot of the ins and outs of how things go at the hospital of so if course. he watches he watches a doctor role play and you do malpractice he's probably gonna know <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be in the comments like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> you just messed me up there. <laughs> yeah, you've done a lot of both English and Spanish ASMR. Um, yeah. Which language do you enjoy doing ASMR in more and why? This is crazy. English, why? Okay. Um, I live in the States since Maybe I was one year old until I was like 13. So 13 years I lived in the States hmm. and it was my first language. Like people oh. think Spanish was my first language. That's why a lot of people ask me, well, you have a really good accent when you talk in English. You would not know that you speak Spanish um, until you tell us. And I'm like, it's because of that. Because they would think I learned English in Mexico in a private school or something. But no, it was because I lived in the States like for 13 years. And I was only going to school and it was totally English. It was not like a Spanish school or anything. Hmm. The only Spanish I got from, was from my parents. They speaking Spanish at, oh. at, at the house, right? So uh, my brother and I always talked in English because he also went to schools um, in English. So the movies and everything, that's where I got the English from. And I think it's easier for me sometimes right now. It's crazy. Right now, I still stumble on certain words. So if sometimes um, I don't get quite the message out there, what I'm trying to say, it's because of that, because now I live since I was 13 until now that I'm older, <laughs> I'm not going to say the specific age, but now that no I'm like problem. in my 20s, 20s. Um, you're, you're definitely significantly younger than I am. I'm 35 in August. You're 35. In, in August. You don't look 35. I get that a lot. Like 28, 27. Well, you probably think I was in my late teens without the beard. If you if you go to my my yeah. uh, my ASMR channel on YouTube, search yeah. uh, sort by oldest. I am so baby faced. It's a joke. <laughs> oh my gosh, and that is the thing. I need to look at that because there are people um, that have baby face. I don't know about me, but they say no. You're 19. I mean, and I'm like, no, you're lying. I don't look 19. When I put a lot of makeup, I look older. But when I don't, I look like, and when I get a ponytail, I look like I'm freaking in middle school or something like Interesting. that. Interesting. <laughs> oh, those are good genes from my family. Thanks to my mother and my father. They look so young and they are like yeah, 50 mine too. something and they look like 30 something. You would think they're like my brothers or something. So yeah, knuckles on the good genes. Can. Yes. Woo. 
Yeah. And as I was saying, so I stumble right now sometimes in English because I started talking more Spanish with my hmm. friends and everything. Um, but I didn't lose the English part because I still watched movies in English, um, read in English, everything. I actually watch everything in English and I don't watch it in Spanish, like to keep the English going. So if you ask me what is easier for me or what do I like most speaking in English, English um, ASMR is perfect for me because I'm just, I think um, I like to keep practicing my English still and not losing it because I could have just done streaming on Spanish and done everything in Spanish. It would be so much easier for me, but that does not help me keep um, talking um, my English with people because my friends, most of them don't talk in English. So where do I practice it? Well, I'm like, let's do it. Let's do it all in English. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Um, my friend Carol ASMR, is, uh, as you know of, um, yeah, she's... I don't know her. Yeah, well, she... I mean, I don't know her, but I've seen her content. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll introduce you at some point. But um, she used to do both Spanish and English uh, on her main channel, which at the time was called Sleepy Kitty ASMR. She uh, only about a year ago or so decided to just use her real name. Um, okay. but when she started, she was doing both languages on the same channel when she decided to take her, uh, her English ASMR to a separate channel and keep, uh, yeah. Spanish. Cause uh, she actually polled, um, her audience on our community tab. What should, what language should I keep on this channel? And what should I bring to another channel? They uh -huh. uh, over 90% said, keep Spanish here and bring English to the other channel. So she started doing them separately. And yeah. the algorithm likes that um, her Spanish level suddenly took off because oh. it, 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 took, it took off after that. And having both of them together was confusing the algorithm and, really? and alienating an audience. Yeah. Um, I yes, I'm doing that. Yeah, I, I that's that's why I'm that's why I'm telling you. I think I think if you if you consider trying that, it may help boost your channel a lot faster. Thank you so much for that tip. I will definitely try it. Like yeah. I learned so much from you in a lot of different ways. You you've been helping me so much, Cam, with a lot of things on Twitch that I also didn't know. So thank you so much. Of course. Let's talk food for a bit because uh, Ooh, food. Yes. I'm actually hungry right now. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> in fact, y'all will find out a specific reason later in this video, so stay tuned. Um, but um Recently on one of your streams, um, somebody uh, said, uh, come to the U.S. I can't promise our Mexican food is any good, uh, but I live in California. The Mexican food here is amazing. Um, yeah. uh, but that being said, uh, what are your favorite kinds of foods? My favorite kind of food, people would think it would it would be Mexican food, and it's not. I'm so sad. I don't know if people also. I'll be honest. I I in my head guessed that it wasn't because a lot really? of people a lot of people like food from other uh, from other cultures, myself yes. included. Well, I love sushi. Yes. And I, sushi, I love, and I love. Um, uh, I don't know how you say it in Spanish, but like the noodle sushi, like the noodle. Um, the noodle sushi. Ram. What was it called? Oh, ramen. 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 ramen yeah. I love it. Yeah, ramen's so fantastic. If you take me to sushi and ramen, shoot, like I'm a happy girl. Like that's my favorite food. Awesome. Yeah. yeah su sushi. Like is... I have a tons of favorite food, right? But that's what one of my favorite. I love pizza, pepperoni mm -hmm. pizza with mushroom. Yum. Half and half. <laughs> there you go i'm i'm pretty crazy when it comes to pizza my ideal pizza is one that i guarantee you no one else is going to try for right. for different reasons depending on the person because i put i like to put a lot on i like to put um mushrooms olives yes pineapple sorry chris not you sorry. put pineapple yeah. i'm not gonna say anything <laughs> oh chris, chris not if chris is watching pizza. he will he will yes. let me know in the comments um uh I, I, I use I, I use pineapple maybe 70% of the time, but pineapple is one of them a lot of the time. Um, I also put spinach mushrooms and I drown it in crushed red pepper. I, I ate oh. a pizza with a mountain of crushed red pepper on stream once, and I'll probably do it again Damn. now that I said it. <laughs> Dang. I am, you know what's something weird now you're talking about spicy? 
um, I'm Mexican and everything, but I'm the type of Mexican that does not eat spicy ass food. I'm oh, sorry, I don't know if you can say ass. I you, you, curse a lot. You, I'm sorry. you can you go to my stream. I curse. You a lot. can you can curse on the show. <laughs> but well, okay then. Spicy ass food is not for me. That's fair. Not it, it's for definitely me. not for everybody. And here's like the salsa all the time, and it's not for me, dude. Like, even even the I'm not so spicy bad. salsa. Uh, it has to be the not spicy salsa. It has to be like the tomato salsa kind that has like a little drop of little chile, but only that. Like it, it can't be too too rough because I can't. I don't enjoy my food, and there are people that enjoy their food suffering. I'm like, why do <laughs> like you like me. suffering with your food? Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> and they're like, it's just another kind of flavor like, once your body is hell? trained. He's like. I can't eat it any other way. I'm like, no, dude, I'm not enjoying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, nobody in my family likes uh, spicy food. I'm the, I'm the only one. I'm also the only one in my family who's, um, who's vegan. I often have my, yeah. I often, yeah, I often have my pizza either without cheese or, or um, vegan cheese. I can, I highly endorse uh, Miyoko's mozzarella, not sponsored, but Miyoko's <laughs> makes really good, um, really good mozz. It's, it's so fantastic. So um, you don't eat meat. No, um, and and I also, when it comes to sushi, don't uh, don't have fish with it. I just uh, I just have it rolled with mm. avocados and or cucumbers is my go to. There was a moment in my life that I was considering being vegan because of a lot of serious things going mm. on, right? Yeah, totally. Um, but I. Like I, I can't. It's it's tough. Did, it took it I took can't. me a few years to tradition tradition transition. You're also a fan of horror films, so oh, yeah, you, you found that out. Yeah, huh? yeah, you you know we're gonna have to talk about that. What are your favorite horror movies and why? I am a major horror movie buff. My favorite ones, like I could watch all of them. It's the Chainsaw Massacre. That's a good one. Chainsaw I, Massacre, and you know. Who I have a big crush on, and it's so freaking weird. Like, don't think I'm crazy, or maybe I am crazy. I don't know. Um, Jason mm -hmm. is my go-to boy horror boyfriend. Like, hey, I who have, can like, who can blame you? Have you seen Jason that bod? Crazy. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, so weird. But yeah, I love him. I love Jason. So yeah, he's my boyfriend from like the horror guys. He's my go-to boyfriend. I'll be honest with you. The only Jason movie I've seen was Freddy versus Jason. I haven't seen any of the regular really? fight. Right? Yeah, I haven't seen any of the regular Friday the Thirteenth movies. I am so bad with seeing movies in general that on my Discord server, um, which y'all should join by the way, there join. is <laughs> there is a chat channel called Films Keith Needs to See. Where everybody mm -hmm. can make their suggestions cool. of movies that that I need to see because there is a good chance that I haven't seen it. You don't watch a lot of movies. I I, guess, I don't. I'm terrible at that. I do have a few uh, good favorites. Like um, talking about these yeah. Are, go ahead. Sorry. These these aren't these aren't horror films, but my favorite movies are My Cousin Vinny um napoleon dynamite um oh yeah that one uh -huh. yeah i i love me some james bond films that's how james bond two three and five and i became good friends which i think you would get along with because he's also a big horror movie buff james bond yeah james bond two three five yeah. oh yeah um yeah i love talking to him on his stream i'm always on his stream yeah he's so great he's he's, so he's a great dude nice he's, he's been on the show about a year or so ago uh-huh yeah and really. then we were talking about tiktok stuff like transitioning to tiktok also and like he's yeah. such a fun guy absolutely but um back to horror movies um i think if i had to pick a favorite horror movie it would be scream um partly oh, yeah. partly out of bias because i grew up very close to where it was filmed oh and it so was that's... and it was one of the first r-rated films i've seen really <laughs> yeah those, but I think those that kind of horror movie for me, it's more like the, the one that gets you jumping, like because mm -hmm. it's not completely that it scares you, because like Scream doesn't scare you; it has a mask on and whatever. It's yeah. the what I get from that movie is that that could happen. Anybody could just get the mask and kill because they get crazy. Oh yeah. I mean, 
those are the type of movies that are like that could happen mm -hmm. right going it's back to texas chainsaw that's like, based on a true story yeah exactly yeah. i think that's why i love the chainsaw massacre yeah and the case was still like open when it came out of the what the yes i don't know if it still is i think i think it I might i think it is I, I, well, but then I again, it I was. They haven't catched him. They didn't it was. Catch it him. was fifty years ago that it happened, so it's very possible that the guy could just be dead. Yes, yes, I also think that, but who knows? Who knows? But yeah, that's those are my favorite horror movie. Um, well, I said it was um, also Halloween. It's one of my favorite. Yes. Halloween, all of them. I've only seen one of the uh, Halloween movies, and it's the one that starred the actor that played Junie in Spy Kids. That's literally all I remember from it. It's been so long. It's <laughs> so funny. Junie from Spy Kids, I used to watch that movie so much. Almost and I good. also, I bothered my son with, my son, my brother with that, because um, we call him Junie. And oh. I'm like the older sister. He's my younger brother. So, so you're it was Carmen. Like the same role. Yeah. We were like, um, we're alike. Uh, like they bothered each other in the movie. And I'm like, that's you and that's me. <laughs> that's my family were like, that's kind of how my sister and I are too, but I'm the older one. That's the big difference. It has to be like that. I mean, that's how brothers interact. <laughs> yeah. And also, well, as I was saying, like Halloween and one of my other favorite movies that I love and I introduced my son. People are going to like judge me on this. <laughs> when he was like three, four years old, I got a pizza and I was like, let's watch Chucky. Like the first <laughs> Chucky movie. Yes, I know. And I watched if it. If my mom loved it. had me say like that at bad, that age, bad, I would have part. nightmares. <laughs> And you know what? He is the bravest kid I know. Right yeah. now he's like eight. And he doesn't get scared easily. Like take him to the movie, like a scary movie. And he's like, yeah, let's go. And he's like so chill watching it with popcorns. When my other friends' kids are like, no, because he's going to have nightmares. I'm like, I don't know. Like there's a lot of different parenting things. But I, I did that with my son. I, yeah. I, I watched because maybe because I was a such a horror movie fan. I'm like. Let's watch Chucky. He was like four years old and we were eating pizza. Oh my gosh. Crazy. Yeah. That's the thing though. Everybody's, every kid is different. You know, yeah. some, some absolutely could. Others can't. You just, you just gotta, you just gotta figure it out. I'm yeah. not, I'm not a parent myself, but, um, but I've known people who have, um, who are parents that have told me that, uh, we talked a little bit about gaming earlier. Um, I, I know that, that, I uh, that you like games too. Um, we played yeah. among us on stream together, which was a lot of fun. That. We're gonna have to do that again. That. Um, and, uh, and you also have, um, some, some gaming plushies in your background. We can see Pikachu there. I love uh, Pokemon. Yeah. Um, you also have Mario and Sonic, uh, somewhere. There yeah. he is. Um, I like move. He's sleeping. What's that? <laughs> He's sleeping. Sonic is sleeping. Ah. <laughs> um, what are what are some of the first uh, games that you played? Pokemon on Game Boy. Mm. Um, the first Game Boy. Uh, it was my first game, Pokemon. Really? And I loved it, yeah. That's awesome. I remember when that came out. A lot of my friends were, were playing it. I didn't have a Game Boy. Um, you did? So, no. I, to this day almost exclusively almost exclusively have um plug in to the tv kind of consoles um the only handhelds um, i have are the game boy advance and i guess the nintendo switch was which is a hybrid um, yeah and i never really got into pokemon because i because i'm not good with um turn-based combat games um but i do appreciate the franchise yeah but I that one that one was easy oh really maybe i'll give it another shot because and this is embarrassing, but I have admitted it several times in the year before. I'm going to admit it again. To this day, I've never won a single Pokemon battle in any context in Pokemon games or on the cards. I've lost every single time. I've only oh tried gosh. a few times. So if I tried more, I probably would have more success. Yeah, but yeah, totally. but yeah I um, I remember playing Pokemon <laughs> Stadium with friends a, a couple times before and I got my ass whooped every oh my time. Gosh. That's I, funny. Yeah, so may, maybe I'll get better. Um, but yeah, the, the only the only Pokemon game I've ever been any good at is Pokemon Snap. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Pointing and clicking, say, I can do um, that. 
I thought you were going to say Pokemon Go. <laughs> no, I've never there. played Pokemon Go. <laughs> But I've had some, my coworkers at the time it came out were obsessed with Pokemon Go, and and during their during their breaks they would spend the entire time um, walking around staring in their phones, and I it freaked me out because a lot of people were um, a lot of people were not paying attention to their surroundings and getting hit by cars, and I even saw a video of a bus driver in I think Korea or Japan, some, somewhere on there he was hunting Pokemon while driving a bus. Oh my god! Yeah. So, so I mean, it's it's it is a time. Yeah, it is a it is a great game, but you do have to play it responsibly, y'all. Please do. I have an aunt that did that, like not not that exactly, but she was really obsessed with the game. Mm. That she was just going to parks, or she even had to drive somewhere else just to catch new different type of Pokemon. She would do that, and I was like, "What are you doing?" And we're talking that she's like older and she's like well i love the game she got really obsessed with that game yeah i don't know what happened i i really didn't play that game actually it wasn't i was not i was not interested it 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 didn't get my attention yeah it was it was not quite like the pokemon that you knew yeah yeah because i i i do like in the pokemon i do like um capturing them but i like the fighting part i like that but I really did win a lot because I bought a lot of potions and stuff to just like relive them or like give them more power and strength. I loved it. It was one of my favorite because I'm not really good at combat um, games. I don't like them that much. I like more adventure games, actually. I feel you. Yeah. More into adventure games. Uh, yeah, me too. I love adventure games that involve some combat like Zelda. Um, yes. like, like there's a there is a lot of combat in Zelda, but that's like only a small portion of it. A lot of it mm-hmm. is it's just figuring your out your way through it. Uh, a lot of puzzles go through it's it, more a lot of traveling. Thinking, yes. Yeah, exa- exactly. Um would you ever consider uh streaming a Pokemon game? Yes, of course. I, I'm actually just um waiting to get a better computer so I can stream without no lagging. That's the only thing that's stopping me. But of Uh, course, if when I get that, I think, of course, I'm going to still do ASMR. But I think I'm going to do like Monday, Friday gaming because I want like I love gaming also. So that's going to be pretty fun. Mm -hmm. I want to share like a lot of also horror games. Mm -hmm. I love playing horror games. So, yes, I'm just waiting for that. What is your favorite horror game? Oh, my God. Resident Evil. Resident Evil is good. The only and the us. only Resident Evil game that I got into was four. I I, I know I'm terrible, um, but <laughs> but I I I, uh, I definitely want to try some of the newer ones. I tried the original one recently on on my PlayStation Classic, and I was so bad with the with the controls, I could not figure them out. I felt I felt really? like an old man playing it. Yeah, and it's <laughs> and it's from my generation it's from it's from the it's from the 90s so there's no so i have no excuse what the hell (laughs) i know maybe one day i'll figure out but but uh but resident evil 4 i could do no problem i've i've beaten that a a few times but i i would love to try resident evil i think it was 7 that was in in vr the new one just came out on play 5 and Oh, I really? recently played it and it's really good. Like the graphics are awesome. Oh, and it yeah. also has like a storyline to it. So I love that. I love storylines. Mm-hmm. And um, a other horror game. Well, not horror, but it's like the ones that are um, The Last of Us. Like those type of games. Uh, like story, yes. story based games that you choose your destiny or whatever. My sister I and I used to um, play that together and switch off like like um, she would hand the controller to me whenever there was uh, stealth involved because I'm a huge Metal Gear fan. That's no secret to the internet. Oh. Um, so I was really good at at, at um, the stealth aspect of it. And then I'd hand it to her for the um, the face of face combat because she was a little bit better at that. than Okay. Me. Yeah. So we were, so we were tag team. Yeah. You're also a bit into conspiracy theories. Um, totally. <laughs> yeah. We won't totally. we won't talk about um uh, politically oriented conspiracy theories obviously, yeah. but how would you like to talk about aliens? Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. When I started um about alien stuff, um conspiracy theories, um it was really since i was in my teenage years because actually my dad is really into it Hmm. and we used to watch in tv a lot of series about 
aliens that used to have been a long time. We're talking about in the barely 2000, 2000, okay, in 1999, um, that this happened in TV, that they were saying that they were capturing people and putting like stuff in their brains and the aliens were taking them. Like these were documentaries. It yeah. was not even a series. It was like documentaries. Uh-huh. So my dad was really into it. And I watched it. I watched the shows with him. So I've actually always believed that there is um, other life out there. Like, I don't think we're the only ones. And I don't know. I think soon they will probably pop up in Earth and say hello. Like, I really think that's going to happen soon. I don't know why, but I really think that's going to happen soon you never know and and uh, the funny thing is um uh as far as alien specific life go- goes the way we humans think of it i i'm in the not sure category but i do think that that there's got to be life uh, out there i mean not too long ago water was found on mars and um and if, if you find water, there's likely going to be life. It's not a guarantee, yes. of course, but but water is essential to life. And when water is present, there could very much be undiscovered life there. You and NASA, NASA recently said, like they, they confirmed, I think it was last year when they confirmed, NASA confirmed that there is extraterrestrial life. How about like that? To, for NASA to confirm that, that was crazy. Everybody was like, what is going on? Like NASA just confirmed it. What does that mean? That's why I think something is going to happen soon. And that's just a theory of mine that they are going to like come or something because NASA confirmed it after a long ass years. Why? Why yeah. would they do that? One of my, one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite incidents um, that I saw on TV discussing whether or not aliens are a thing, um, particularly aliens in area 51. Um, and, mm-hmm. and y'all, y'all already know I'm never going to mm-hmm. get political online and I'm keeping my political beliefs to myself. Mm-hmm. But um, years ago, uh, Barack Obama went on Jimmy Kimmel and uh, they talked about um, alien life in Area 51. And he mm-hmm. asked, uh, is there alien life? Do you, do you have aliens at Area, Area 51? And, yeah. he, and he's like, I, I can't reveal anything. Oh <laughs> and, my and, and, uh, and, and so Jimmy is like, well, I talked to Bill Clinton uh, when he was um, when he was president of the United States. He, he looked through the files and said that the, that there weren't any. And Obama said, and I quote, that's just what we're instructed to say. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, yeah. Have you ever watched the series The X-Files? I used to when I was little. Yeah. Not anymore. That was, I was so little. Yeah. That's... Yeah, that's that was around. Uh, that was really popular in the nineties. Um, yeah, I, I, I've I've been a pretty big fan for a long time. And recently, I um, I have a coworker that lives out in the countryside. Um, mm. And I went dog sitting for when um, when her when she had to go out of town for a wedding. And mm-hmm. um, both of us had time off. I I happen to have time off in the same time, but didn't have any particular plans for that time off. It's just I'm a workaholic and I don't take enough. Time off, so I was due. Um, to happen. Yeah. Um, so so I so I was like, sure, I'll dog sit. And I, one night while I was there, it was out in the middle of nowhere at a cattle ranch, and I was watching X Files, and I looked outside in almost pitch black d- darkness. With you'd see a little bit of cows, and I thought to myself, Oh shit! Thirteen year old me wouldn't dare to do this. <laughs> at all i was i was totally afraid to do stuff like that at at the time but now i'm like eh, it's really it's a tv show i can deal with it i'm still i mean i'm in in my place i wouldn't i would still be uh, i wouldn't yeah because i don't know that those things always happen when there's in the country or something um really isolated those like that's what you see on tv that's where mostly these um beings or whatever um happen right Mm -hmm. or come out like mostly they say they come out in canada or something i really don't know but that's what they say oh really yeah interesting i always i always hear that that they that they come out in the usa and uh there was there was a one movie uh monsters versus aliens which 
I, again, have not seen, <laughs> but I've seen the trailer and there was a reporter that said, once again, a UFO has landed in America. The only country that <laughs> UFOs ever seem to land in. <laughs> oh my God, Because no. a lot of pop culture has them landing in America and very rarely anywhere else, which is yeah. kind of strange. What if, what if we always talk about this with my, well, actually with my mom, because she's also into it. Like my mom and my dad, that's why I got so into it. Hmm. Um... She always asks, what if they were like the ones that come out in the in the alien movie that they are like so big and that they disappear and then they appear that you don't see them? Have you seen that the alien movie? I've seen it kind of, uh -huh. but I was dead tired and crashed in the middle of it. So I've missed <laughs> about half of it. There are a few bit. there are a few movies in that category for me, too. The Lord of the Rings movies are very notable for that. I've I've watched them all and fell asleep through all of them not because they're bad they're actually amazing yeah, i love them but they are. they are so soothing they're basically asmr in movie form <laughs> i mean why do you think why do you think uh asmr role plays of lord of the rings or something similar is so popular yeah. they're soothing by nature yeah i mean i love that's lord of the, the rings yeah, what are the I only watched it once because they are too long. I wouldn't watch it. Yeah, again. exactly. I, I, but they I'm are the really way. good. Really yeah, good. I one of these days I want to rewatch the Lord of the Rings movies, but I am definitely going to uh, watch them half and half at a time <laughs> because because uh, I that's to like really put attention. Yeah, exactly. That's right. that's part of why I love gaming so much. It's because I'm one of those people that always has to be doing something. Like like I, I I can't be sitting there and, and staring at a screen doing nothing for an elongated period of time. If I'm doing that, I gotta be doing something like holding a controller and moving things around or, or something like that. If I'm if I'm gonna watch a movie for a long period of time and <laughs> not for friends, I'm gonna be cleaning the kitchen or working out or whatever. Um Yes. I, I gotta be do what doing What is something. that? Like I get you to I cannot be just like sitting down and doing like watching TV. No, I can't. Exactly. Can't. It's tough. Props to anyone who can. <laughs> but I'm like, oh yeah, poor you that like, you don't want to rest. I'm like, it's not me being like, no, I can't rest. My body all. wants to rest, but my brain doesn't. Exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing. So our friend, uh, I am a grilled cheese sandwich, a.k.a. Samantha the sandwich. I AKA, love that name. A.k.a. at I am a ham sandwich. I guess she's a uh, grilled cheese ham sandwich. Uh, asks, and I quote, how is your day? What is your favorite sandwich? These are important questions, Keith. <laughs> okay, perfect. By the way, I love that name. It Right now, since I'm hungry, it makes me more hungry. And that is My why favorite. I talked about being hungry earlier. Now y'all know. <laughs> now you know. Well, my favorite sandwich, I will have to say, it has to be, I don't know if a lot of people know Carl's Jr. Oh, yeah. Carl's Jr. is okay. big around here. On, on, the, on the West Coast of uh, the U.S., it's Carl's Jr. On the East Coast, it's Hardee's. Oh, good thing mm -hmm. I learned something new. Right here is Mexico. It's Carl's Jr. And... It's the the chicken, the chicken sandwich. Ah. The chicken sandwich with cheese. Well, they make it here. I don't know if it's on. You know, the menu is different in different places, but mm. it has um, grilled cheese. It has chicken. It has lettuce, tomato. Uh, I love it. it the, cause it's there you grilled, go, Sam. It has grilled chicken. cheese. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny. I um I don't think I've ever had it. Um, but uh. Long before I was vegan, I um I was I really loved the uh, chicken sandwich that they have at Burger King. Um, okay. Partly because I was a big Dane Cook fan at the time, and he had a <laughs> he had a bit about the chicken sandwich. He called it the chicken sandwich <laughs> at the BK <laughs> Lounge. Um, but but yeah, that that was that was really good. Um, and when I when I was a freshman in college, I got that quite a bit. Um. But but now uh, my favorite sandwich uh, has to be the Impossible Burger. In fact, I'm going to make one after this interview. I I replied to that? say so. The, a couple of the most popular uh, vegan burgers out there are the Beyond Burger and the Impossible Burger. Those are those are my two favorites. Uh -huh. um, the Impossible Burger is probably the closest to a real burger that I've 
ever had other than a okay. real burger it's it's really it's truly amazing it's it, it it's it, it will blow your mind if you give it a try um like it ta- it's supposed to taste like meat yeah, pretty much. A lot of okay. vegans don't like that, understandably. Um, a lot of a lot of vegans can't separate the, the, uh, the fact that the it, taste. it it tastes like meat, and and sometimes sometimes uh sometimes uh veggie burgers, um, uh the Beyond Burger especially will have mm-hmm. um, beet juice in it so that it bleeds, and that bothers okay. a lot of vegans. Um, mm-hmm. It if it, it does excessively, it could bother me, but if if not, I can. I can separate that, but that's just me. Everybody's different, you know. I'll have to. I don't know if they have that. I mean, they, I know they have vegan restaurants here in Mexico. I mm-hmm. really, really one day I have to go and try one because I do want to yes. try it, and and I will post it on Twitter. Do it, yeah. Let me let me know how it goes. Um, it's yeah. it's being adopted in a lot of popular fast food restaurants. I think I think uh, Burger King. Yeah, it is Burger King. Burger King now has an apo- impossible walker. That I can't okay. talk to that impossible whopper, <laughs> uh-huh. um, but I haven't tried it because I'm also gluten free and um, way really? too much of their stuff has a lot of gluten and a lot of cross contamination can happen. Yeah, and and uh, most impossible burgers don't have wheat in them, but mm-hmm. a lot of veggie burgers do, and I think the particular impossible burgers that they use at Burger King may have it in it. I could be dead okay. wrong. I encourage mm-hmm. everybody to do their own research because I didn't before recording this because I'm an idiot. But <laughs> it's 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 worth your time if you're gluten-free and and vegetarian or vegan like myself. Um, just just do your research. Um, it, it will prove worthy and valuable. Yes. I can tell you one thing for sure that I know because I, I, I don't really know a lot about the food of vegan and um, the gluten stuff because i haven't done it but if you come to mexico you will be really limited to oh i know <laughs> oh i know you don't accustom doing any of that here it's, it hasn't been it hasn't like how do you say it it hasn't been brought to mexico like a thing to do we're so used to like eating meats and all of that oh, so yeah. you will be really like it would you would find places you would you will find them but it would be like like five maybe places you know like it's counted it's it's not something that i can't handle though because um when i was first gluten-free and eventually when i was first vegan i did have those struggles because now at least where i am i live in the bay area and um california in general is pretty good with the that kind of stuff but that wasn't always the case i went i was gluten-free um long before anyone knew what gluten was i went gluten-free circa 1997 and and everybody would ask me what is gluten what is gluten and now they're like oh you're one of those people if i'm just a stupid trend <laughs> like something like you're, that. you're going with a trend yeah no i i i am the ultimate hipster when it comes to gluten <laughs> um but same thing with with veganism i went uh, i went vegan uh in 2011 and vegan food was uh much more available than it was in the 90s but it still was a lot more limited than it is today things things do get better as time goes by and in exactly. pretty much uh, every aspect and california is really open-minded with a lot of things oh yeah california is the i al- want to visit california one day i'll t- do it <laughs> it, it, it is it is uh, it is so fantastic here the only the only downsides to california are everything is expensive and we're always in droughts that's that's pretty much it that's okay we're going through that drought so we're here too <laughs> well there you go you're prepared so uh what are your future plans uh for your channel on twitch youtube and tiktok well my future plan for twitch is obviously one day getting partnered like i would love to make um, Twitch my full time job, that would mm-hmm. be the plan. I mean, that's that's the plan, right? Yeah. Um, that's why I'm trying to be more consistent with my content, um, having a daily schedule, and having my followers know my schedule. Yeah. Um, because uh, my goal is getting partnered and getting to that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and my YouTube channel obviously are also growing it. But now that you gave me that tip, like I was trying to do it bilingual. Um, well, we'll try to grow my Spanish YouTube and my my English YouTube as well. I think pushing, since I have TikTok and TikTok works, I've, I've seen that it works where you live. So when I post content, ASMR content on TikTok, 
I have mostly all of them are Spanish viewers. So mm. that will be perfectly for me to put them to go and see my a YouTube ASMR in Spanish then if I make that channel. And my Twitch followers or my other followers that I have on Twitter go and see my English YouTube channel. So that is my main goal, growing my channels. Um, also, obviously, getting a YouTube partner. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is. Yeah, I want uh, that you'll, email. You'll get there. It, it, took, <laughs> it took me about a year and a half to get YouTube partner. Yes, that's awesome. That's really fast. That, I mean, I think for me, like I see it, that's really fast. That's really awesome. And, and that's one of my goals to, to see if I get partnered on YouTube and Twitch. I still have a long time to go there, but we're, we're being consistent now because last year Absolutely. I was not being consistent, but that was the goal starting this year, being consistent, having a schedule and uploading like I promised my viewers, like uploading one Absolutely. Week, I was not like very that. consistent last year yeah, either. And and deep, for most of the beginning deep. of this year, I'm now, re and I'm just now starting to be a bit more consistent. In fact, to be honest, part of what motivated me to get consistent again was Chris's retirement from the show. Um, oh. I thought to myself, Chris is not going to be there. I really got to I really got to pick up the slack because I don't want the, this uh, I don't want this channel that has a lot of history to go to the wayside. And wow, and so, so I'm starting with this. And as I ease back into getting into um, back into ASMR on YouTube and on Twitch um, and Chris has been forever pressuring me to start making TikToks. Maybe I will <laughs> one day, but you know, with my brain, you kind of go, you kind of got to go one step at a time because otherwise yes. I may overwhelm and crash. Yeah. And that's happened to me a few be, times in the last few years. You have to be years, comfortable you know? to do it. Exactly. And at the moment, I don't know shit <laughs> of what I'm doing on TikTok. I'm just like scrolling through and sending likes, occasionally comment like you do on all other social media platforms. That um, is funny. Since but, it's a really new platform, a lot of people yeah. are like, I don't know what to do or how to drive in people. Exactly. And the, know. and the yeah. concept of how live streams work on, on TikTok, first of all, you, it, apparently you need a thousand followers on there. And every yes. time I talk to him, he's like, correct. Keith, we gotta get you. The, the, you got. We gotta get you to a thousand followers so you can go live with me. Like, <laughs> and that is true. Yeah, and uh, and on Twitch, you donate by cheering bits or or subbing, gifting subs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Whereas on TikTok, you give people certain items. Those are the bits. Those like you give the them bits. a donut or or a flag or a heart yes. or a yacht. Uh, the TikTok other day, is really limited with your interaction. Yeah, when when Chris told me that somebody gave him a yacht, I was like, <laughs> "What? Wait, what? <laughs> somebody somebody who's super rich came to your live stream and like you, I'm buying you a yacht. That's <laughs> that's literally what I thought." <laughs> But it turns out it that's is just that. another form of bits in the form of an imaginary item. Yes. You, you, you're donating They're that really way. Cool. It's yes. it's fun and creative, but if you don't know TikTok, it's confusing as hell. Yes, like I it know. was for me. You're like, what? <laughs> yes. At first it is confusing. And a lot of people are actually um, driving it to their Twitch. They're doing the yeah. live and they put it, follow me on Twitch. And they're doing gaming on Twitch. But they're live on TikTok to get more followers um, on their account, on their TikTok account. So that is um, another form of growing your viewers. Yeah, I need to start doing that. One of these, <laughs> one of these days, I'll, I'll. One of uh, these days. One, one of these days, it's, I'll it's learn really TikTok. It's really complicated running a lot of social media. A it lot is. of people think it's easy. Yeah, oh, no, it's easy. Not at all. I hate it when they say that. <laughs> it's not easy. It's Try not. doing it yourself. They think you do it once a day. You you do it every day. It's constantly like, and the editing and the, um, they think you just get in front of the camera and then you upload the video. That's it. No, there's a some lot people do, it. but they're the exception, not the rule. Yes, <laughs> as Harris Heller exactly. would say. So yeah, social media is a job. It absolutely is. Even if it's not your job, job like like mm -hmm. like uh, like I have your a full main. I have a full time day job as my, my main. This is this is my side, but on my, on my side I'm doing this podcast. I'm doing my own ASMR channel on YouTube. I'm running a Twitch channel. I uh, I, I run an ASMR convention. I'm doing all these awesome. co all these kinds of different things. Yeah, and it's just. It's over. It's overwhelming as hell, yes. but uh, at the end of the day, it's worth it. Love it because you love it. Yeah, because you love what you do. That that That's whole what thing. I do too. But you do. I do beauty also. Oh really? I, like yeah, on my daytime, 
Um, I do. I put lashes. Nice. I have my. How do you say it? My character. How do you say it? Your character. Your your like when you get mad, like you get a different attitude. How do you say it? There's a form to saying your character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say it's your character. Like if you you have a character that you use for certain role plays. No, you have your persona. No. No. Like when you're trying to say lash out, like that I have an attitude. Also, I can have oh. an attitude. Yeah, but people haven't stopped to th think about if they may be the cause and why they caused it or whatever you said in that tweet. <laughs> Seriously, that is so true. Like, like, uh, like I, I sometimes have an attitude. Not a lot of people see that online, um, but but even I do have my limits and patience. And, uh, and that's hard, right? Being on social media, yeah. talk, talking right now to everybody that's listening to us. Um, it's really hard because sometimes when you're on Twitch, you're there to also entertain people and calm them. And sometimes it's not even a good day for you at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but like a job, also like in your job, you have bad days in your yeah. um, full-time jobs, but you have to put that in the back of your head because you know what? Right now is not the time. Right now you have to like get that out of your system and exactly. you'll have time later on. To and there's that. you can and only do that for so long that without energy. exhausting yourself. It's mm -hmm. it, it's tough. And that's what that's what streamers uh, deal with all the time, because uh, yes. streaming uh, is pretty involved enough as it is without having trolls coming in and trying to sabotage. No. Um, but uh, that that's the thing. You just got to learn to deal with it. And uh, and it's not as simple as, as simply ignoring it, although that's a critical part. Um, you also have your mod crew, which uh, w which uh, you trust to to um, keep the chat safe and oh, and, and appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. Mods appreciation. Mods appreciation. <laughs> I love my mods, too. Um, we we, we uh, I, I don't think mods are appreciated enough. Even mm. uh, and that's coming from uh, from somebody and 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 from you who I know uh, greatly appreciates your, your mods too. It's said uh, they they do so much uh, uh, just just uh, as a favor to their favorite streamers. Know. You know that is lovely. That is I just appreciate it so much. And every time we end stream, I try to thank them for being there and just keeping the chats. Um, on point. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I don't think anybody's better at thanking their mods at the end of their stream than the ASMR nerd. Um, he has um, he has like a whole routine he, he has uh, uh, when he wraps up his streams like, and shout out to our wonderful moderators like oh, FamCam is. <laughs> it's all, it's all like that. That's yeah. so cute. It yeah. makes you feel special. Yeah. It makes you feel like, thank you, bro. Like, yeah, he's, appreciate he's one work. of the sweetest dudes on the internet he's oh. he's been on the show and he's actually um going to be coming back on the show as a co-host oh, cool. uh, when, he, when he we interview uh draconis a some artist, a little uh, teaser cool. for y'all yeah um but that being said thank you so much indy for coming on it has been an absolute pleasure um uh we will thank you uh, absolutely so uh everybody please go follow indy on her youtube her twitch her tiktok Instagram, Twitter, the works. We'll uh, put a link to her. Not not Linktree, but a different site you use. What is it called again? Beacons. Beacon. We'll have a link. Yeah. We'll have a link to the, her beacons uh, down below so that you can uh, follow all her stuff. And also be sure to check out my link tree as well in the description. You can find my ASMR channel on YouTube, my Twitch channel, and all my social media and uh, and also my Discord. Um, that being said, uh, this has been FamCam. That has been it was Independent so Bitch. Fun. Thank you. It was <laughs> yeah. so fun. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, thanks for the questions. And I hope everybody got to meet a little bit more of me. And I appreciate just being here on the show. And you are awesome. Thank you. As, as are you. And uh, with that, we are out. Stay chill. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.